Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, we're going to be building the Dual Beam Pro antenna, which can cover 40 meters right up to six meters with the right tuner. Now, this antenna is British designed and made from a company called Pro Antennas. All links will be in the description of this video if you'd like to download the manual or look at the specs in any more detail. Now, before we get into the build, let's quickly go over some of the specifications. Now, gain figures have been published on the website for 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters, along with the elevation in degrees for that particular gain figure. The main rotatable element is 5 meters long, and the two end elements, which I believe are capacitance hats, are 2.5 meters in length each meaning a turning radius of 2.6 meters is required. However, you can install this antenna without a rotator. More about that in a moment. Total weight of the antenna, mass clamp and transformer comes in at just under four kilograms. So in terms of antennas of these types, it's actually quite light. Now two versions of this antenna are available. Well, strictly speaking, it's the transformer but you can choose between 400 watt or 1000 watt version with of course the 400 watt version being slightly cheaper. An ATU is required for this antenna as it's not resin on any of the supported bands, while a radio's internal ATU would be sufficient for 20 meters and up, you'll most likely need an external tuner for the 40 meter and 30 meter bands. Now, even though this antenna will tune for the 40 meter band, it will be a compromised performance but that's expected due to the size of the elements. And when it comes to mounting this antenna, you can install it without a rotator, especially if you orientate the antenna so the broadside beams are pointing in the directions you wish to use. For example, in this diagram, we can see the antenna orientated north to south, meaning the maximum energy will be east to west. So in the UK, this would be towards North America and Europe. Now, before we get into the build, this piece of information is important. And it's something I failed to notice before I started building the antenna. And that's because for a few hours after the build, it felt like I had hundreds of splinters in my hands. Now that'll teach me to read the manual fully next time. Okay, so here are all the parts that get delivered. And mine came in two packages. The elements are in one package because it's quite long. And then the transformer and the clamp hardware is in a little box. Now in the box, we have a really well-documented manual, which as mentioned earlier, you can download from the Pro Antennas website if you want to take a browse through yourself. We then get the mounting clamp, which attaches to the center of the antenna and then to a supporting mast. We then get a bag of bolts, which are used to attach the two main elements to the GRP rod. And also in this bag, we have two braided wires. Now these are used to connect the transformer connections to those two main elements. We also get a little bag with some self amalgamating tape, which is used to cover the coax connection on the transformer. Now also in this bag are four rubber end caps, which are installed on the end of those capacitance hat elements. The included matching transformer has two connections either side, which are used to connect to those main elements. And you also notice an SO239 socket, which is used to connect your transceiver or tuning unit. Now, as mentioned before, there are two versions of this part, either 400 watt or 1000 watt, which you can choose at the time of ordering. Now, in preparation for the antenna build, I will now attach the two braid straps to the transformer box, making sure that when tightened up, they're facing upwards. Now, back outside and in the middle of the two main elements, you'll notice a package which contains the pre-drilled and marked GRP rod and three zip ties, one of which is metal. Now the metal one is used to secure the transformer to the mast, but of course you can use your own if you want to. The ends of the main elements will already have a securing bolt through them. Now this is to hold the capacitance hat elements in place. You'll also notice the pre-drilled holes for those elements to go through. The capacitance hat elements will also be pre-marked so that when inserting these into the main elements, you can line up the lines to the outside of the main element making sure that it's perfectly centered. Now there are a couple of ways in which to start the build, but essentially you start with inserting the GRP rod into that included bracket like this. 
You just need to ensure that it's centered by using those pre-printed lines. Obviously, assembling this way, you cannot fully tighten everything up as you still need to insert the bracket onto a mast. And the main elements will have two pre-drilled holes. Slide these over the GRP rod and then insert the included bolts. The two outer bolts can be tightened, but don't tighten the inner ones just yet as we need to connect the transformer. Just ensure that the ends of the elements have the bolts pointing upwards like this. We can now take the transformer and attach the braided wires to the elements like this. At this point, you can tighten all of these bolts to ensure everything is secure. Also make sure that the bolts and the transformer are tight too. You can always loosen these and reposition the wires if they're not particularly vertical when attached to the pole later. Now we'll take the capacitance hat elements and slide them through the pre-drilled holes at the end of each main element, locating them perfectly center using those pre-printed lines like this. And the securing bolt has been installed in such a way that you only need half a turn to fully clamp down on those elements. So just be careful not to over tighten these, otherwise you could potentially dent those elements. Lastly, just place the included end caps over the ends of those capacitance elements. They are four supplied, so two for each element. And do the same for the other end of the other main element. Now, as I'll be installing this antenna on a rotator, I thought it may be easier to attach the GRP rod to the bracket or the short mast pole from the rotator is actually in place. Of course, when you're installing the bracket along with the antenna, you must make sure the capacitance hat elements are perfectly horizontal. If they're not, then you can just loosen the bolt slightly on the bracket to make adjustments. Now we need to fit the transformer strap to keep it in place. Just move the transformer as far down the mast as you can go, just to ensure those braid wires do not touch any part of the mounting bracket. Now I'll attach the coax feeder. Now this piece of coax is around 10 meters long in length, and I'll connect it to my Char URT1 remote tuner. And then I have a piece of coax that will go off to the shack. At this point, you can use a piece of the included self amalgamating tape and wrap it around that coax connector. This will help to stop any water entering this connector. Add a single loop in the coax and then use the included tie wraps or zip ties to keep the coax and loop in place. So that's it, that's the build complete. And yet it does look a lot larger when it's down on the ground as opposed to being a few meters up in the air. You can see here the cheap TV antenna rotator that I'm using for testing this antenna. I did have to make a rather long control cable though. After some help from my son, we managed to get the antenna up around seven meters off the ground. Of course, higher is better, but this is just a testing spot before I decide to install this antenna on a mast on the side of the house. And if I did that, it'd probably be around 13 to 14 meters off the ground. Now, considering the total length of both of these elements are around five meters, it does look a lot smaller once it's up in the air, which is only a good thing as it should be neighbor compatible. So now it's time to test it out. And incidentally, to start off with, I will be having the antenna facing north to south, meaning the actual beam directions will be broadside east to west at the same time. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Good morning, sir. You're five and nine. Yeah, you're also 59 as well into the UK. 73s and have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Matthew. Over 73. India, Quebec, 5, Papa Julia, QZ. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. It's Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Delta Quebec Whiskey QSL. Mike Zero Delta Whiskey Whiskey QSL. Delta Quebec Whiskey. Okay, Mark uh, Zero Delta Queen Whiskey. Uh, you're five and seven, fifty-seven. Yeah, you're five and seven as well, fifty-seven. Thank you very much. Ciao, good morning, pomeriggio, seventy-three, five and nine, para ti. Ok, muchísimas gracias. 59 plus, eh, eh, más. Ok, 73. Now, most of the footage of me using this antenna was over the period of when we was having a major solar storm. So the HF bands, as always when I test an antenna, was probably the worst I'd ever seen. As I compare the Dual Beam Pro against another antenna, I had my NFED half-wave antenna 
connected to my SDR receiver as well. You can see here from these clips when I switch to the Dual Beam Pro, as the noise floor drops quite considerably. CQ20, 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 this is Italy, Italy 6, Romeo, Charlie, Alfa, Bravo, Italy, Italy 6, Romeo, Charlie, Alfa, Bravo, special call. CQ20, 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 this is Italy, Italy 6, Romeo, Charlie, Alfa, Bravo, Italy, Italy 6, Romeo, Charlie, Alfa, Bravo, special call. Honey, I was uh, operating remote and uh, I was uh, in a QSO and uh, meeting some local people uh, over there and uh, you know, during the day and uh, that the day at, uh, at night, I was uh, calling, you know, uh, <laughs> with my call sign, so they were uh, quite confused. Well, I performed some tests using an external antenna tuner and also running a tuner inside the shack. Here are some more A and B comparisons which show the lower noise floor on the Dual Beam Pro compared to my NFED halfway. Uh, Roger, Roger, QSL, I tell your vertical antenna working perfectly. I commute uh, to my another vertical antenna and it fills you with uh, we clean all 5 by 3 on the another vertical. Um, and the band is 6 meter. Uh, for, for 6 meter works uh, 3 elements and for 10 meter works 2 elements. Uh, it, uh, you can find uh, this 2 bands are on, on remote.com uh, so that, uh, that's very easy. Make yourself. Yeah, five minutes here, uh, Neil. Uh, we really appreciate the contact with you and everyone, everyone else as well here. I did hear, I did hear a lot of other as well here, but sorry about that. I didn't take everyone, but that's how it is sometimes. Now, as mentioned earlier, about the time of recording this video, we had a solar storm, which caused havoc with HF, almost killing off the bands. Now, this brought in a very rare opportunity for us in the UK to experience the Northern Lights in terms of radio there was also a strange effect on the bands. In this following clip on the six meter band, you can hear how the aurora is affecting the sound of everyone's SSB transmissions. Personally, I was half expecting them to say exterminate at one point, but definitely an interesting side effect of this massive solar storm. Anyway, guys, that's the Dual Beam Pro from Pro Antennas. If you're interested in this antenna or want to find out more, I'll leave a link to their website in the description of this video below. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.